This is Tamara from Mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm demonstrating how to crochet the perfect summer crochet clutch. It's a free pattern you'll find on Mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you'll find the written pattern, as well as links to all the supplies you need and any other tutorials that I'll reference here today. You can see here is the clutch, and it's made with Red Heart Nylon Crochet Thread one ball of it, or I guess they call it a tube. This one actually comes on a plastic tube as you can see here, so we'll say one tube. You'll also need stitch markers, this, these are by Clover, and a crochet hook. Again, this one is a Clover Amore, and it is a USG or four millimeter. Okay, here we have the finished clutch, and if I open it, you can see I've put a magnetic snap inside here that just holds it closed. This is completely optional. Another optional feature that you'll find in the written pattern is, of course, you can line it. Now, you can see I didn't finish the lining on mine because I want to be able to show it to you for this tutorial, but you'll also see it's a little stiff. That's plastic canvas. I love sandwiching plastic canvas in between the fabric and the uh, crochet in projects like this because if you think about a clutch, a lot of times they have a little bit of stiffness built in, and if this was just crochet, it would be very drapey. Adding that plastic canvas adds a lot of sturdiness to it. And if you do, don't need, or excuse me, if you don't know how to line bags, I do have a nearly no sew lining tutorial linked at the link in the description. So please do be sure to check that out. Otherwise, before I turn it to the back here and open it this way, hopefully you can see this is all crocheted in one big piece. Now it's worked in rows, but it's sort of like an oval with an end cut off. Now here is our starting end. Actually, we start in the middle and then we crochet sort of this oval back and forth where we come around one end, but then it's a straight end at the other and we just turn and come back around this way. So we'll be making the purse this way. And then when we are finished crocheting, we fold it up in thirds, half, one third up this way, and then the top third up this way and seam up the sides to finish our clutch. So let's go ahead and make the first few rows together. Now, as I said, this pattern is made with Red Heart Nylon and it comes on a plastic tube. So you're going to want to go ahead and pull the label off before you begin crocheting. Then you can usually find the end pretty darn easily, just like that. And you can put this on a stand if you like to, or just sort of let it spin on your table, whatever is easiest for you. Now, let me find that end again here. And this pattern starts with a row of 46 foundation half double crochets. Now, if you don't like to make foundation half double crochets, you can instead chain 46, skip the chain closest to the hook, and simply half double crochet 46, then work of the rest of row one from the comma as written. But let's go ahead and get started on row one as written together. Okay, so to make a foundation half double crochet, you can see I've already got my slip knot on the hook, and I'm just going to go ahead and chain two, one and two. Then I will yarn over, go into the first chain I made, the one furthest from the hook, and I like to go into that back hump of it. Now, nylon is a little stiffer, so you may need to squeeze your yarn in there and you may need to try and work a little bit looser than you're used to. It may take a little bit of getting used to, but we're going to go ahead and pull up our loop. Now we've got three loops on our hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull through that first loop just once there, like so. That forms the bottom or foundation chain of our first half double crochet. Then I'll yarn over and pull through all three, like so, to finish our half double crochet. That's how you make the first one of those. Now, if, again, if you need a tutorial on the foundation half double crochet specifically, there is a different one linked at the link in the description here, and that one may be a little easier to see than with the nylon. So to begin the second one here, before I actually do it, we want to yarn over, go under that, those two loops at the bottom of the first one we made that made, that I said made the foundation chain. We just go right under those and pull up a loop. There we go, like so. Then we yarn over and pull through just that first loop to form the bottom of our second stitch. Then we yarn over and pull through all three to finish off our second stitch. So that's two foundation half double crochets. Again, I need a total of 46, so I'll see you as soon as I have those done. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm going to say I've made 46 foundation half double crochets. I also want to point out that I put a stitch marker in the 45th. This is just a little visual cue that will help you out later if you go ahead and do that as well. Now, after you've made your 46 foundation half double crochets, we're going to work two half double crochets in the foundation chain of the last stitch. So what does that mean? 
Now remember when you make foundation half double crochets or if you chain and crochet along it, you've got that foundation chain. For us now, it's these two loops on the bottom of that most recent stitch, actually these two up here, right it's here. So just as if we were going to make another foundation half double crochet, I'm going to yarn over and go under those two loops right at the bottom of the previous stitch and pull up my loop here, but I'm not going to chain one for the bottom of a new stitch like I was before. I'm just going to go ahead and yarn over and finish my half double crochet. Then I'll yarn over and do it again, right back in that same spot, right into that foundation chain, pull up your loop, yarn over and finish your half double crochet just as normal. Then we're going to continue to half double crochet in the foundation chain of the next 45 stitches. So at the bottom of that first marked stitch is where you'll begin and I like to go ahead and put another stitch marker right there. These 45 stitches on either side from here to here on either side of our sort of half oval are going to be the stitches that are all worked straight and even with no increases. So we always know with all our increases up here to create the half oval shape that when we work then we get to these uh, marked stitches we're going to go ahead and be working straight again with no increases. It just helps us keep track and make sure oops make sure we're not losing track of any of our stitches. So like I said just go ahead yarn over go into the next stitch there right at the bottom you should be all lined up easy peasy pull through a half double crochet just as you normally would working right into the opposite side of that foundation chain however you made that first row of stitches. So you should have 45 total of those. So I will see you at the end of row one, which should have a total of 93 stitches, 45 up here, three at the end and 45 down the other side. Okay, so here I am at the end of row one. We began here, worked our way around one end and finished up on the opposite side of that foundation chain, but now we're going to turn and work back the opposite direction. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one and turn my work. And now for row two, we're going to work the entire row in the front loop only. Again, I do have a separate tutorial for this linked at the link in the description. However, basically front loop and back loop simply refers to the loops of the top V of a stitch there. You can see here are the tops of those previous row of stitches. The loop closest to you is the front loop and the loop close or furthest away from you rather is the back loop. So if you flip your work over, now this is the front loop and this is the back loop. It's always relative to the crocheter. So let me get my hook back in that loop there. And we're going to, as I said, work this entire row in the front loop only. So we're going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the first 45 stitches. So we go as if to go under both loops as usual, but send your hook right up in the middle of the stitch there. Then you can pull through your loop, yarn over and finish your half double crochet. And you can just continue working all the way across in the front loop only, half double crochet through that first stitch marker, which should be a total of 45 stitches. Then we're going to go ahead and put our increases to continue our half oval. So I'll see you as soon as we get to that first marked stitch. All right, so we're working on row two and we've worked 45 half double crochets in the front loop only. Takes us through that first marked stitch. Now we've got our three stitches here at the end curve. So what we're going to do is work two half double crochets in each of these three stitches. Again, just working in the front loop only. So let's go ahead before we do that and move this stitch marker up one row to our last stitch now so that we maintain, oops, should have pulled that loop up a little higher first. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that last stitch we made there on the side so we can keep those stitch markers going back and forth as we make subsequent rows. And now we're ready to go ahead and do those increases. So to make those increases for the next stitch, I'm going to yarn over and go under the front loop only, pull up a loop and finish one half double crochet. Then I'll yarn over, go right back under that same front loop for a second one. And I'm going to do that again in the next two stitches. So I go to the next stitch, insert my hook, make a half double crochet, yarn over and do the same thing again. And then finally, I've got to do that one more time in this third stitch here before we get to our second stitch marker. So there's one and then there is two. Now we're back at our second stitch marker so we know it's time to start working even. We're just going to work one front loop only half double crochet in each of these remaining stitches until we get to the end of row two. So at the end of row two, you should have a total of 96 stitches. So I'll see you there. All right, so we've come all the way around and we've finished the end of row two. 
Now it's time to begin row three. We're going to chain one, and now we are going to turn and work this entire row in the back loop only, and again in half double crochet. So no big surprises here. We're going to half double crochet in each stitch until we get to that first marked stitch again. So we'll have 45 front loop only, or excuse me, this one's back loop only half double crochets. So let's do that for the first few together here. You can see I've yarned over, and this time I'm going to look at the top of the stitch and put my hook right in the center there. So I go under just that back loop. And I can pull up the loop, yarn over, and pull through to finish my stitch. So by working in the front loop and then the back loop, switching off every row, we're going to create some really great texture in this bag. So just take your time and back loop only, half double crochet, the first, whoops, <laughs> there we go, the first 45 stitches. Okay, so for row three, I've made my first 45 back loop only half double crochets, and that brings us to our curve, and we're ready for increases again. Now for row three, we are going to work two half double crochets in the back loop only of each of these six stitches. Remember, we ended up with six here at the end after row two, so we've got six to work into now, so we'll work two into each of these. Then, of course, as soon as we get to the other side and our other stitch marker, we'll work even again to the end of our row. So you can see there in the first one, I'm still in the back loop only, but I've worked two half double crochets. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that to each of these stitches here at the curve. So at the end of row three, oops, this stuff is very slippery. You can see I'm having a little trouble keeping it on my hook. The crochet nylon, it's got sort of a, almost a, almost feels waxy to it. I'm sure it's not actually wax. I can't get any wax off the yarn, but it's sort of got that feel to it. So like you can, uh, you can find it slipping off the uh, the uh, hook pretty easily. I find I have to keep an extra little bit of tension on there, which is a little harder to do while filming. So just work your way, like I say, across. Looks like I missed an increase there, so I'll pull that one back out. There we are. And work two half double crochets until you get to that second stitch marker. So I will see you there. Okay, so I've worked two half double crochets in each of those stitches between the stitch markers there. So now we've got 12 stitches between the stitch markers. Now that I'm at my second stitch marker, I know it's time to work even right to the end of our row. So I'll just half loop, or excuse me, I'll back loop half double crochet in each stitch till I get to the end of row three for a total of 102 stitches. So here we are at the end of row three, and you can see our little bag is starting to take shape here. We've got our flat end and we've got our rounded end and we're ready for row four. So to begin row four, we're going to chain one. And again, we're going to be working all half double crochets. And this time we're switching back to front loop only. We'll change every other row. So row two was front loop only, row three was back loop only, row four is front loop only. Basically, even numbered rows are front loop only and odd numbered rows are back loop only. So for row four, we're front loop only. We're going to start again by half double crocheting in the first 45 stitches. So I will see you when we're ready to make the increases for row four. All right, so beginning row four, I've got my first 45 stitches made right up to that first stitch marker, and then I'm ready to begin my increases that will take me around the curve. Our repeat for row four is two half double crochets in the next stitch, one half double crochet in the stitch after that. So two, then one, two, then one, two, then one, and we'll repeat that a total of six times around. Remember, we're going to continue working under the front loop only. So let me pull up one half double crochet in this next stitch, followed by a second. There we are, there's our increase. And then just one half double crochet in the stitch after that. Then we repeat again, two half double crochet in the next stitch. There's two, one half double crochet in the stitch after that. So we do that a total of six times, and that will take us on over to the other stitch marker. Once we hit there again, we know it's time for some simple half double crochets worked right to the end of the row. So at the end of row four, you should have a total of 108 stitches. Okay, so here we are at the end of row four, and we're ready to begin row five. By now, you've probably picked up a little bit on the pattern, especially if you're an experienced crocheter. We're going to chain one and turn to go back the opposite direction, and this time back loop only, half double crochet to get to that first stitch marker. Then we'll have six increases till we get to that second stitch marker and then work even again. So I'll go ahead and work here to that first stitch marker so we can make our increases together. Okay, so when we've worked to the first stitch marker on row five, we're ready to begin our increases. And this is going to be pretty similar and from here on out, it's going to follow a pattern. 
that I will explain to you now. We're going to make two half double crochets in the next stitch. And remember, we're still back loop only for this row because it's an odd numbered row. And then we are going to work a half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Now, if you'll remember our increase pattern from the previous row, it was half double, two half double crochets in one stitch, followed by a half double crochet in the stitch after that. Now we're working two half double crochets in one stitch, followed by half double crochets in the two stitches after that. So for the previous row, we had an increase followed by a single half double crochet. And then for this round, we're going to have an increase followed by two half double crochets. So I'm losing count while I'm trying to uh, speak at the same time. But basically, for every row we make after this, there's going to be an additional stitch in between the increase, in between where we work two half double crochets together. So in this round, there's two in between the increases. On the next round, there will be three, four, five, etc., until we've worked through 15 rows. So continue working in pattern. Again, follow the link in the description. That'll have the numbers. You can just check them off as you go and keep track and make sure your stitch count is always right. So keep crocheting through row 15, and then I will show you how to finish up your perfect summer crochet clutch. Okay, so as I said, you keep working through row 15. At the end of row 15, you should have a total of 174 stitches. I'm going to go ahead and stop at row five because I think it will give us a pretty good visual representation of what happens from here. The first thing we're going to do is when you get to the end of row 15, or whatever odd numbered row you actually wanted to stop on, then you're going to go ahead and work an edging along this straight edge. To do that, rather than turning to work back this other way at the end of row 15, what we're going to do instead is simply chain one and turn our work this way, and then we can single crochet evenly right across this bottom edge right here. Now, stitch count here doesn't matter. You just want it to look nice and be even and not be puckered and not, be, and not have too many stitches so it's floppy. I find typically for me, working one stitch in the side of each row works pretty well, but these are half double crochet stitches and everybody's gauge is different. So you may need to stick an extra one in there once in a while. Um, it's totally up to you. Just evenly single crochet right along that flat edge there and I will see you when we get to the end of that section. If you need a tutorial on how to work into the edge, I don't feel like this yarn is going to demonstrate very well how to do that because it is a little shiny. I do have a separate tutorial for that linked at the link in the description. So please do check that out uh, where it's a little bit easier to see. But if you're an experienced crocheter, you know, just evenly single crochet right along that straight edge and I will see you when we get to the end of this little edging section here. Okay, so when you've evenly single crocheted across the edges of all your rows there, you should have just your nice even curve and a nice straight edge there. This will actually be the open on, opening on the inside of your bag, so you just want it to look really nice. Then you can go ahead and cut your yarn, like so, and then we'll just pull that through and weave in that end when we're done. However, I'll do that later. For now, let's get to the assembly. Okay, so here we have our finished piece. Now, if we, when we did our final edge here, working across this edge, this was the right side. This is the same side we worked our odd numbered rows on. We've got this great texture from our front and back loops. So this is the side we want to be on the outside of our clutch. So what we want to do is flip it over so that it's right side down, and then we're going to fold it in thirds to create that clutch shape. You can still he see here are my ends on my little one here that need to be woven in. What I'm going to do is take this bottom third and fold it up right about to where our stitch markers were, like so. You can see this puts our finished, it's a little harder to see there, there we go. That puts our, puts our finished edge there we just did in the edging. That puts it that on the inside of our purse. And then that curved edge will fold down to become the flap, like so. So all we have to do now is seam up these edges and add a little edging to this to finish it off. So what I like to do is pull my stitch markers back in and then very carefully use my stitch markers to line up the stitches at the side. Now at this point, it would be a good idea to count how many stitches you have on your flap in front and make sure that perfectly matches up with your side. And then of course, go to the other side here of your clutch and do the same thing on this side. You just wanna make sure those are matched up absolutely perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my stitch markers in here and then we will work on the next step of assembly together. Okay, so I just added one stitch marker to each side as I made sure they were perfectly even here, but on your full size clutch, you'll probably have a few more along each side just to make sure all your stitches are matched up really well. Then what we're going to do is turn this over. This would be sort of the front side of the clutch where the flap is. 
we want to start on the back right here. So we're going to go ahead and start at one edge of the back and we want to join at this very bottom here right at the fold. We want to go through both layers. So you can see here, if I pull up my hook, you can see we've got these two stitches matched up. That means these two will match up, these two will match up, and these two will match up. So what I want to do is carefully put my hook through both of these stitches. So this one and its pair, which is right next to it because we're at the fold, like so. This one can be a little, little wobbly and that's okay. We're going to take our yarn, pull that loop through, like so. I always like to flip my tail end over there so it gets a little trapped right away. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to work a single crochet in each of these pairs along the side, going through both layers until I get up to where our flap will be. So just go through both of those stitches again and make a single crochet. And then you come to the next pair of stitches. Go into the next stitch on this side. Make sure you go all the way through. Move things around if you need to. Make sure you're lining them up right and go through that second stitch on the other side there, like so. So you just wanna make sure that you're working through both layers really evenly until you've worked your way all the way up the side. So as, like I said, you just single crochet through both layers. Then we get up here to where it's just the flap, just single crochet in each stitch around the flap. And then when we get to this side, you can single crochet through both of those layers again. Now with single crochet, I found I didn't need to add any additional increases for a good curve here. If for whatever reason with your gauge, uh, you found you find that the single crochets, single crochets start making that flap a little tight, then you can go ahead and throw an extra in there if needed. But otherwise you just single crochet through both layers here. Like I say, just make sure you go through both those layers really well. Pull that loop through and make it a nice tight single crochet. So I will see you when we get to the end of this final row. Okay, so I just finished step two of the assembly here and I have single crocheted all the way across the flap and down that opposite side. And if I turn over here, you can see our little mini purse is done. Our clutch here has its interior. That was that straight edge and we've got our flap. All that's left to do is add a closure and a lining if desired. So let me set this aside and I'll pull back up our full size version here. Now I've linked out to the magnetic snap that I used. I found it in my local Joann's, but I did also find it online and I simply sewed it on with uh, some matching thread that I had in my stash already. Um, this yarn comes in, I want to say five or six different colors. I want to say five. Um, so you should be able to find threads to match them pretty easily. There's some great basic colors there. Um, another option, as I mentioned earlier, you could line it. So be sure to check the lining tutorial for that if you're interested in lining it. But I did cheat and didn't line this one so I could show you the inside of it here. I actually used a little bit of tape to hold all this together. You can see I cheated quite a bit there. There's my plastic canvas. I'll go ahead and finish this up for myself now that I've finished the tutorial. But you can see here is the inside of the finished purse. Haven't even woven in those ends yet, but it's got some great space. You can fit a lot of great things in here, making it the perfect summer clutch. And that's how to crochet the perfect summer clutch. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you'll check out Red Heart Nylon Crochet Thread. I've seen it in big box stores and it is of course available at redheart.com and at the link at the link in the description. So again, go to the link in the description so you can get all those numbers, make sure you maintain your stitch count and make this very easy and simple purse pattern. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it answered any questions you had about the pattern. If it didn't, please do leave me a comment and let me know, I'm always happy to try and help. Also, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Moogly channel. It really helps us out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great summer.